Welcome, welcome, welcome. Greetings, everybody. Greetings. Greetings and welcome. I'm Danny T, Evolving Creatives. And this is Melanie Hibbert from the Primary Learning Centre. And we'd like you to welcome you to the Educational Talk Show. Now, the purpose of this talk show is to have a conversational debate around the challenges and uh, um, <laughs> challenges that parents and pupils face on their and radio presenters too, <laughs> <laughs> and our educational journey. Um, and what we as a community can do to help um, empower them, basically, and to navigate through the educational system. And also bring to you nuggets of information that you can share with your children that can help you in your journey or to educate them in all things, whether it's English, um, maths, all of the, the normal history. curriculum, as well yeah. as as well as the black history. history. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. OK, so... Um it being Black History Month, let's um, start by looking at the national curriculum. Let's look at what's actually on offer this month for um, our young people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. What usually happens in Black His uh, Black History Month at school is there tend to be the the similar things that um, has always been taught. So, in Key Stage One, what's on the curriculum for? On Key Stage One, we have uh, Rosa Parks. We have Mary Seacole. Okay, and there we are. That's it. That's it. Apparently, that's all we have to offer for our younger children in Key Stage 1 in reference to their black history. Absolutely. Um, and then in Key Stage 2... In Key Stage 2, we have as an option, not as a, a statutory, but as an option, we have the Benin Empire uh, dated between 900 and 1300 AD. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> wow. okay so that's all that is available actually in the curriculum but i think what you find that um in lots of schools in primary schools specifically as well um you'll find that your children will either study or learn about some kind of uh, black figure usually within uh, say sports or music. jesse owens yeah so sports you've got jesse owens you've got usain bolt you've mm -hmm. got um Usain Bolt seems to be the one that they've been doing for the last few years. Yeah, because you know, he's the most. Yeah. Since two thousand and eight, he has been a contender in in, mm -hmm, in that, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and and has been covered a lot in that sense. In the sports. walls covered with pictures of the lightning bolt sign. <laughs> yeah, you know what absolutely, I mean? <laughs> absolutely. And why it's glorious for all of our children to know about that? There is so much more to us than Usain Bolt mm -hmm. and his amazing um, achievements. Um, you'll also get uh, coverage of. Um, um, pop music idols them kind of things that you know so you might get the michael jacksons you might get the, um the james browns and so forth and then you also you'll get some political figures you know such as jesse owens um mandela mandela oh yes mandela. martin luther king martin luther king is a classic malcolm x not so much not so much but you, so much they, they do touch on him but you know him, but not in depth you know? yeah you can't get too deep yeah in that mm. sense and then you'll have the civil rights movements you know people in that so the uh, rosa parks and mm -hmm. Um, That's it, Rosa Parks. Um, um, yeah. When you go into secondary school, yeah, but you can go into secondary school, you'll get some coverage on Angela Davis and right. those figures and the Black Panthers and so on. Right. In secondary school, but in primary school, not so much, okay? So our um, teaching of black history in school is very, very limited, mm -hmm. yeah? And we tend to cover, they tend to cover the same things again and again and again. Um, and in actual fact, um, you've probably heard it before, but I would like to play it again because I think this this video really does summarize people's feelings about what is taught in schools um, in in reference to their Black history. And actual fact, lots of students could actually know much much more about their Black history because because of what's been taught to them by their parents mm -hmm. or supplementary schools mm -hmm. or other places of learning, basically. So so basically, the the students can know more about it, more than the teachers. Yeah, have a listen. Okay, so carrying on from our lesson last week, we were looking at the key divisions in the early stages of the civil rights movement and the general impact across the board. Sam, come on. 
Sit up straight. Right? Stop slouching. This is the perfect opportunity for you to engage, to so make the most of it. But we learn the same stuff every year for Black History Month. Every single October, we learn the same things, either apartheid, slavery, or the civil rights. How many of you guys have actually learned something new these last years? See? That's what I mean. Sam, this is our history. Come on, man. No, nah, seriously. Do you guys know anything about Ralph Bunch? The first black person to win the Nobel Prize? Or that the richest person ever lived was a black man named King Musa I of Mali? What about Ella Baker? What about Ella Baker? What do you do? Actually, I know who Ella Baker is. One of the most influential women of the civil rights movement. This is why I can't take Black History Month seriously, man. But Samuel, the curriculum is designed to help you think about Black History critically. Actually, miss, it's designed to teach us what to think, not how to think. For example, when that light switched, you taught us it was Thomas Edison who made that happen when ironically it was actually a darker man who made that light flick, Louis Latimer to be precise. Quite nice when you're talking about Mr Hamilton and his racing car, but red light stop. We're always taught that Martin Luther King had a dream, man. But those dreams can't be achieved because our brains are in chains, our minds are enslaved, so we won't get our redemption, Morgan, free man. Will we ever be free, man, and leave this state of imprisonment? and take that walk of free, damn it, green man from a traffic light invented by the same man who made gas masks to protect our organs. Another free man named Garrett Morgan. But I bet you never knew that. We need to open our minds. But how can we be taught to see if the blind lead the blind? The first person to develop significant eye surgery was a black woman named Dr. Patricia E. Bath. Now on that note, there's a question I must ask. If this is a great opportunity to learn and be engaged about our past, why are we not actually being taught about our past? Transatlantic slavery where we're taught black history starts, but is it really? There seems to be a lot you haven't told us. And you shut down and hold back on the bold ones who stand against the way you're trying to mould us. Consistent enemies of progress. You're surprised because I know things you don't expect me to know yet. And when I tell you you're wrong for telling me about me, you call it a riot what I call it a protest. The Broadwater Farm Riots. The media exacerbate and make it seem like it's a bunch of delinquent youths on the streets. When really the first cause and trigger was death at the hands of the police. We cease to know information and the truth. And that's simply because you withhold information from the youth. Maybe. Maybe one day we'll be satisfied with how our knowledge of history equates. Well, I'm sure like me, you're waiting for the teacher to fill in that space. So do so then. Um, no answer. Well, maybe I can help and just throw out there some names. Mary Seacole, a Crimean war nurse. Mary Prince, a black female author. To be precise, she was the first. Bernie Grant, influential local activist and respected NP. Trevor MacDonald, one of the first black ITN journalists to hit the TV screen. Jamal Edwards and SBTV. And when Fuse ODG brought the Yazonto dance to the UK, and my foot swayed to the left and to the right like the wipers of a car's windscreen, and DJ Abrante brought Afro beats to the streets. See, it's funny when we think of our childhood memories. A man who was actually funny, Lenny Henry. Many others and the list continues. Marcus Garvey, Haile Selassie, Bob Marley, Ignatius Sancho, Tupac, Fela Kuti, Muhammad Ali, Maya Angelou, R.I.P. Kwame Nkrumah, the first Ghanaian president who retained independence from England. The Windrush ship which brought Caribbeans to Britain. So much to learn in just one month. A tip of the iceberg, a tiny grace. And what was the first black Roman emperor's name? Years passed and we're still caught up in the same civil rights age. Which isn't bad if you learn something new. But we don't. And we're not being taught enough about our culture so there's no one else to blame but you. And if not you, then who? Questions, questions, questions. If you're not teaching us these things then I'm inclined to believe it's because you don't. No. No. You're the teacher. Your job is to teach so you must know. And if you do, that must mean you don't want us to know. But that's low. If the information is accessible for our knowledge of our culture to grow, then why on earth wouldn't you want to let us know? Why are you focused so heavily on the influential but very few men and women who made things happen for us? Why are my people being highlighted for a predominantly negative past? 
Why do I know the things that you don't and I'm not the teacher, you are? Why are you focused on our negative past but not on our bright future? Why are you not abreast with the great young things that people are doing in this world? Why are young people's trademarks and stereotypes gang culture and young pregnant girls? Why are the young people not being given the time of day? And his name of Septimus Severus, by the way. I'm sure as a student, the code of conduct has been breached. So I'll stop here and let you do your job. So teach. And there you have it. And that is something that is very much real and true in our schools today. You know, um, lots of what's been taught about our black history is uh, some of just the smallest and minutest parts um, and are very repetitive. You know, they learn the same thing year after year after year. Um, and sometimes they learn things in, in most of the times they learn them in the wrong context as well. So um, what can we do as parents and as teachers to affect change in that area you know mm. and and i think the first thing would for me would be to actually inform them of exactly what is black history what's mm. the starting point of mm. black history mm. you know um and what's often covered is the um like i said sports personalities um music personalities um civil rights movements and suffering yeah. you know where we have been put upon and used and abused and that is what they determined to be our history mm -hmm. so um yeah like i said um, big props to, to the video and i know it's uh, the young man who performs the poem actually wrote it um himself and yeah he makes a, a, a in infinitely important point which is that um schools when they give us our history they give us uh, it in the context of us we suffer we suffer we suffer there is so much more to us than our recent um suffering if it's to draw a, a time scale it's like a if you're 30 years old you've had a hard time for the last year but that last year doesn't define you you've got 29 years before prior to that that defines you um, that enables you to get through that one year of, of hardship. We need to be teaching our young people their greatness. And if the teachers don't know, then who's going to teach them this? What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean? So what, our history started before slavery? I think so, you know. Really? I, think so. I heard a rumour. Because I'm quite I, I, certain that, you know, when our history and when we teach history, I and heard the rumor. history it starts from slavery. And that's where we come. That's that's where it is. We, it's just there, slavery. So what? what, what, what yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to, I'm going to have to blow that. your mind. I have to blow your mind. We've got multi-millennia, thousands of years of of magnificent history some of the best history humankind has ever produced on this planet and that's what we should be celebrating in black history month not this little piece of suffering which is there upon now yeah because it's you know we, we are portrayed as people that come from slavery that have uh, have always been treated subnormally mm -hmm. you know below the bottom or the bottom rung you know even within our own blackness there's the shadism <laughs> and stuff that makes us you know the dark you are the, the lower that rise you are and so on and that's what well, that is where our history starts mm. you know and again it's a history of suffering you know being put upon being abused and so forth so you know I, I want us to clarify exactly what is black history. It's a very good question because there's enough confusion around that. We've seen what the, the state school thinks is, is black history. What do we think is, is black history? Okay, um, we're going to run a, a video. Um, well, you're going to hear the audio. And it's the introductory chapter to a black history studies program, children's edition, um, put together by myself, um, Danny Thompson Evolving Creatives, and Melanie Hibbert, um, TPLC. So uh, we're gonna play you a bit of it, and it does address the question of what is black history? Rolling. And rolling. It's coming. <laughs> Welcome to Black History Studies, children's edition. Before we can study black history, we need to define what is black history. We need to ask ourselves, what is history? Here's a definition. History is the record and process of the people engaged in struggle to shape the world in their interest and images. This definition applies to all peoples of all cultures engaged in creating a world in their own likeness. 
Therefore, black history is the record and process of black people shaping the world, Africanizing the world. You yourself create history every day as you attempt to shape your world according to your own interests and in your own image. There is the issue of what is and what is not black history. This is of vital importance as African people have for a long time been denied access to their history. This can lead to confusion over what is and what is not black history. For example, is slavery black history? No. The revolts and rebellions against slavery is black history. However, slavery itself is not. It is European history. They are the people that carried out the act of enslavement. The transatlantic slave trade contains two stories. The first story is of a group of people who left one continent, traveled to another continent, enslaved the people of that continent, and displaced them around the world. The second story is of a group of people who were attacked and fought back in order to ensure their own survival. The first story is European history. The second story is African history. Therefore, slave revolts, where black people engaged in struggle to Africanize and shape their world, is black history. Today, we are living in an anti-black racist world. Consequently, our history has to speak to that, and it has to confront the prevailing views of scientific racists by building racial pride in black people and winning the racial respect of others, even through gritted teeth, when white people have no choice but to admit that we did it. Scientific racism, what is that? It's when Europeans try to use science to apparently prove that African people are inferior to them. For example, scientific racists claim African people have smaller or less functional brains, therefore are less intelligent than Europeans. They claim there are certain tasks that Africans are not suitable for. Leadership roles, scientific and academic roles. They also claim that there are certain physical activities that we're not very good at. For example, in sports, for years it was claimed by racial scientists that Africans could not be good swimmers due to their physiology. However, in the 2016 Olympics, African-American swimmer Simone Manuel won the gold medal in the 100 meters freestyle. This was an important achievement as it destroyed the scientific racist argument. Further evidence of an anti-black racist world is all around us. We do not have to look far to see that our history is underrepresented. Just go to the library and look at the literature on art available. European literature and art is vast and in abundance. There's even a fair amount of Asian, Chinese and other cultures. However, African literature is minuscule in comparison. So far, we've defined what black history is and its vital role in challenging anti-black racism and restoring African pride. The scope of black history studies is to trace the history, archaeology, traditions and linguistics of the people called Negroes, Blacks, Africans, Hamites, Cushites, Ethiopians, Libyans, Moors, Zenj, Sudan. Who are these people? What are these names? Negroes, Spanish word meaning black. Blacks, Western racial ethnic classification given to dark-skinned people of African heritage. Africans, people from the continent of Africa. Hamites, the biblical term for African people. Cushites, ancient and medieval name for African people. Ethiopians, ancient Greek name used to describe all Africans, not just those from the country of the same name. Libyans, another ancient Greek name for Africans. In ancient times, the inhabitants of Libya and all other North African countries were African. Moors, 
Roman name used to describe Africans. Zenj, medieval name used for Africans. Sudan, Arabic name used to describe Africans. These are the different names by which black people have been known during history. All of these names translate to land of the blacks or similar. If you didn't know this, you could be reading a book about the Zanj people or the Kushites and not know you're reading about black people. When you put all these names together, when you put together the history of all the African people under the different names listed above, then you realize black history is the biggest history of any people on the planet Earth. African people have been around the longest, ruled the longest, created and invented the most. This concludes the introduction to our Black Studies program. At the end of this and the following chapters, you'll find lesson plans and activities. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's, um, I, I have to say so myself. That's a very impressive um, introduction. Um, like I say, it's, it's an introduction. We're going to tell you more about that later. But just, um, yeah, as I say, it, it clearly defines history. History is what you do. And who knew that, that we were back there so far back mm -hmm. and referred to in so many, many different ways absolutely. that you actually, from, almost like from the beginning of time, mm -hmm. but referred to. So, you know, our history is the biggest history on this planet. Absolutely. And that's because we created we we were the originals we mm -hmm. are but let's mm -hmm. let's not get this twisted and mm -hmm. actually there's a brilliant documentary out um on bbc4 right now at the moment called um the incredible human journey and um i can't remember the name of um the, the doctor that's actually taking us through it the archaeologist and it's this young white woman who has a fascination of tracing the beginning uh, the beginning of our species of our time mm -hmm. you know and where we originated from and homo so sapiens sapiens and, and and where that first first human life was found you know um and in that first episode it talks or she talks of that the first people and the first evidence of people um, was found and, and is found in Ethiopia and is known to be the birthplace of the human species. And that actually everybody <coughs> descends, from. is a descendant from an African person. Mm -hmm. Because, and it, when you watch that program, it's, it shows that only one attempt was, was made by a small group of people to leave and, and come out of Africa, who then went on to populate the world. And that's what she's actually tracing that. And they've used um, uh, DNA and gene, gene, genealogy it? genealogy to trace that. And they've, they've t tested thousands of people and every single person can be traced back, back to a to single that. DNA that originates from this strand mm -hmm. that came out of Africa. It's an amazing program to go and watch. It's um, You can catch it on um, BBC iPlayer on, on BBC4, but just put in The Incredible Human Journey. I think it's a five-parter, but you know, gets you to understand where black history starts and you know why our seed is strong let me tell you, <laughs> you know let me tell just... you but she's also then going to track how how we become them how yeah. they became yeah how, how they, they became yeah, and what they happened. came out of us and and how that's that, gonna yeah. be it's gonna and be it's... interesting to see how she deals with that you know what i'm saying yeah it you would know? be interesting to see that yeah. i mean we know that in terms of it's scientifically based that we know that things evolve and adapt to mm -hmm. their environment mm -hmm. environmental and so adaptation and that changes and we've yeah. seen that in in animal species we mm -hmm. can clearly see that in mm -hmm. you and know, plant in life and, and plant everything life. And so, so they, it adapts to change to their environment mm. so mm. it's going to be interesting to see mm. um what the environment environmental changes occurred for this small group of what she calls pioneers mm -hmm. that came out of Africa mm -hmm. and the journey mm -hmm. that they took to trod then, the long trod, to then man. go and populate the world and you yeah. know and we're not talking obviously that we're not talking in their their lifetime we're talking mm. you know it, it's a generational thing and so mm -hmm. on and so on for for that evolution process to happen for the environment to have an impact mm. on their physiology mm. to then change what they physically looked like and how they operated and functioned. And also that environmental um, change would have then impacted their mentality yes. and what they then deemed to Absolutely. be. The, the, you know, because you know, it, it, it kicks into that survival, isn't it? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so the mentality of 
who they are as a people would have changed. The psychology well. changes. The psychology and so forth. So it's interesting to see because you know Europeans have a different psychology to Absolutely. Africans, just like the, and the and the Chinese and the Orientals. They have mm -hmm. a different psychology to, to, Europeans. to, yeah. to Europeans, and it's like to, to understand where that psychology comes mm. from and how. So and as you're making an excellent point, and, and what it does is it is it is it kind of destroys this is this um, liberal notion of universal, um, and by that I mean you know if if you want people to to take on an idea or something, um, all you need is two words. You you describe it as universal and you describe it as natural. Universal meaning everyone does it. Um, natural meaning it's it's organic. It's a natural thing thing to do. Um, no, we, we, there is no universal psychology. Psychology comes out of your culture and your, your cultural um, um, history, your cultural present, etc., etc., etc. So uh, I wanted to explore, you see, the, the, the Black History Month and the teaching of black history um, in, in schools and out of schools, as the, it was referred to in the video, um, you know, we're teaching black his history and part of that is about combating uh, um, racial, that the, we live in a white supremacist, anti-racist, whatever terminology you want to use, we live in that world. So our history must, uh, must address this. And, you know, the whole notion of, of uh, uh, multicultural teaching and what have you, what have you. L l let me just, if I may, take a couple of minutes yeah. to lay something down, yeah? I'm going to use the example, which is current in schools, of Queen Elizabeth the first okay now Queen Elizabeth the first there's imagine a classroom half the class is white English the other class is um, Afro-Caribbean UK of Afro-Caribbean birth yeah now Queen Elizabeth the first in English history to the English she's an absolute hero heroine she, she she's you know that's why we see so many films about her books about her plays about her um she did great things if you're an english person she's um, um actually formed what she did during her reign formed the basis for what later became the british empire she laid down the foundations of that also as a woman ruling she was what ruling in the late 16th century 1590 to early uh, um, early 1600s so um as a woman in the 16th century, you know, people, I know I've heard white women refer to her as almost, a, what's the phrase, a proto-feminist, because she was a female leader in, in a patriarchal European world, and you can't get more patriarchal than um, um, that medieval period where the status of women um, across Europe was slightly a bit higher than slave, okay? Women had no rights, no one's So she celebrated for, 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 for that, and that's what they will teach the white kids in the school. Now, in that class, what is our relationship to Queen Elizabeth I? Because she is very important in our history. What is our relationship? Queen Elizabeth I funded, supplied arms, um, um, cannons, muskets, troops, artillery. The first English-led um, slave um, invasion of North Africa. Um, it was a... a, a what's the word allied force if that's the, the correct term um, she supplied the arms and some troops there was also spanish soldiers and there was also arab soldiers and they created this guerrilla army they came in um, through morocco and they smashed the songhai empire which made the resultant uh, slave trade possible mm. do you understand so that's a relation to us also she set up the legal framework she set the legal framework um, um, for enslavement which would be in place for the next 250, 300 years okay so that's our in terms of our history that's, that's who she is in our history mm -hmm. so if you're going to teach Queen Elizabeth to a class, half of that class is English and half of that class is black then to, to teach to teach her multiculturally, you have to teach both perspectives. Absolutely, you'd have to teach her as the whole person. Absolutely, and not just what they'd like to cherry pick as the glory and glorify and and, and, her. and, and also sorry to, to cut you and also glorifying um, themselves through her. Yeah, absolutely. do you understand? Yeah. And yeah. that's that's the problem. Um, um, it's not that that we're not in the curriculum. We're all over the curriculum, but we're hidden. And if you didn't know what I just said about Queen Elizabeth the First. 
as a black person, as a black parent or a child or, or, or a child in school, if you didn't know that, then um, um, you can't access that other side to her. Um, and I am actually questioning, I'm wondering how many actual teachers mm -hmm. who teach Queen Elizabeth I um, actually know that part absolutely, of it as well. Absolutely, because, because they've been programmed be, as much as yeah, we Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's not going to have been written in the curriculum as free information. Because bear in mind, you know, as teachers, we go to the curriculum, we find the resources and the information. We find that the, the breadth of the subject, what it is that we need to teach, you know, and we learn the breadth of the subject in that. So if if that element is not being included in the materials that are given to the teacher to then Absolutely. go on and teach to the pupils, mm -hmm. yeah, then it's unlikely to be covered. And and I do want to know, actually, so I'll, I'm, I'm curious to, to reach out to some history teachers um, who are specific in, in <coughs> teaching that aspect, you know, and I'm, I'm a primary school teacher and mm -hmm. I don't cover that. I know mm -hmm. that part is not in there. Right. You know, so it's, I want to know. It's secondary, yeah, but I know yeah. she's definitely so on, I, on I, the I do want to know from, uh, you know, those teachers that particularly teach history yeah whether that aspect Bits of queen of, elizabeth is right. in the information provided to them mm -hmm. to teach and whether then if that's the case why don't they well, do it yeah 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 that's a very good question and i mean it echoes what the boy was saying in the video do you know what i'm saying you're supposed to know so you can tell me and if you don't know were you standing up in front of me telling me say you're your your teacher and that and that teacher in the video her face was just mm -hmm. like awestruck and if you haven't seen the teacher she, and she hadn't a clue and that teacher also was very young teacher yeah she, now, now that's not to say that she wouldn't have the subject knowledge mm -hmm. um you know but but she's you know she she, she she's fresh she's just come through the the the, the pgce or um, um system <laughs> etc et but what i'm saying is um if you haven't seen the video he was talking to a young black female teacher do you understand and so you know, um, yes, I remember for years now, you know, there's been this push, we need more black teachers in school, we need more black teachers in school. Yeah, but we need more informed teachers full stop. Do you understand? There's no point in, in having a, 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 a more black teachers in the school if they're just repeating what white teachers say. Well, yes, I, I hear the point that you're making. Yeah, and I do think that there is an element of that, yes, we do need to be more proactive in what it is that we do. But then if people just do similar things to um, introducing things into the into their mm -hmm. classroom, not necessarily yeah. through oh, the yeah, curriculum yeah, yeah. as such, you know. So, for example, um, uh, in my reading group, I'm, I'm currently teaching a year four class. Um, and in our reading session, they were had an information book about um, lightning. And it goes through different parts about lightning and facts on figures and it. And mm -hmm. then it kind of comes to a part on Thomas Edison and it's talking about the creation of the light bulb. Mm -hmm. Now, as I was reading that with them, very clearly, there's nothing in there in reference to the work that Lewis Latimer did. Mm -hmm. So I stopped that book there mm -hmm. and I booked, pulled out um, the Black Scientists and Inventors book. That, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's actually in book one. And, and if okay. you don't know, that's a brilliant teaching resource that mm -hmm. you can use both in school and uh, both at home. And there's a, a part on Lewis Latimer and his role in the light bulb and what he did in creating. And they had no idea. So I interrupted that. I brought that, him in. Brought him in it and showed him I showed them everything that Lewis Latimer yeah. was involved in, not just in terms of the light bulb, mm -hmm. but he was a skilled draftsman mm -hmm. and he was the one that drew the the um, the patent plans that yeah. for um, Bell, the telephone, right, yeah. for the telephone yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, so, and, you know, had all of these influence, had his hands in doing all of these different things and their mouths hit the floor. Mm -hmm. And then the next, and funny enough, it was this little white boy that said, well, why is he not in this book? Absolutely. You know, <laughs> why is he not mentioned Absolutely. in this book? You know, in that sense. So uh, we have to be proactive mm, mm. in, uh, and, in and what it is that we do and what it is that we bring into the classroom to ensure that our children are picking up yeah. on, on what, the, you know, our greatness, the things that we have done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that certain things in even our way of life wouldn't be like this without the, the input and, and mm -hmm. substantial influences of, of black people, such as the mobile phones in our hand. Mm -hmm. You know, I can guarantee you, most of you didn't know that that was invented and created by a black person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is this is why it's incredibly important to broaden the horizons for what it is that we're teaching our children about our history for them to understand that we're not just about suffering mm. and and then these and sports and music mm -hmm. and and that's mm -hmm. all that we mm -hmm. can do you know we are scientists we are mathematicians we are, are astrologists we're all of those things in actual facts we were the ones that taught them how Absolutely. to do it 
you know and that's the most one of the most frustrating things is that you know that denial of our history is what keeps us as a people down down mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. if we deny our children our history then, then we they, just you know they will go on and repeat the cycle absolutely. repeat and that's how when we've got absolutely. to break that cycle you know? So I went off on No, that. go, 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 go. But like you said, the example you've given, I mean, you know, everyone can make a difference, a small difference. It's not about necessarily, you don't have to kick down the door and tear down the curriculum, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, you can still bring us in. And I want to give a, a, a few examples. Like I say, I went through the national curriculum, key stage one and two. And again, my point I keep reinforcing is we are in there. We are in there, but we're hidden. And if you don't know we're in there, you don't know we're hidden, you'll never find us. For example, in Key Stage 1, um, they deal with the Roman presence in um, Britain. Yeah, um, yeah, they deal with the Roman presence from uh, Julius Caesar, true to the Roman occupation and, and, and staying here for a while. So, um, the emperor, the Roman emperor, Lucius Severus, um, w ruled in Britain between 193 and 211. AD. He was an African emperor. He was an African emperor. Um, yes. I was just distracted for a moment. You oh know I can't multitask. Wow. You know I can't <laughs> multitask, man, when I'm talking. You As know men I mean? for you, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. No, he was he was um, one of the, even in the in the annals of the, of the history that the Romans wrote themselves, he was one of their greatest emperors. Um, he came to Britain, um, stayed here for a long time. Uh, one of the things he did was he actually uh, um, helped refortify Hadrian's Wall. Um, and it's what he did is still standing today. We can just catch a train and go see it. Um, he lived in York. York was the capital city of um, England at the time because London ain't nothing. London was just like a... You, you, you dock two boats in London and that, that was about the size of London. But one interesting fact about him was um, when he came to this country, he couldn't stand the food. So he had food exported from Africa and sent to him in York to eat. I don't know if he was busting the rice and peas, but <laughs> I know wow. the brother was busting. And, you know, and again, there, there, there's literary, literary evidence, um, decrees that he wrote, I want my food. <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> I can't eat these jellied eels and thing <laughs> and, and what have you. So, you know, if you're doing a class in Key Stage 1 um, um, on the Romans, which is statutory, then yes, you could draw him out. You can draw him out. There's another... Um, 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 queen whose name i cannot remember but there, some people refer to her as a queen uh, so she's often been called the lady of the iron bangle it was a um uh, a skeleton was found and dated back to roman times but the skeleton is african mm -hmm. and um, she lived in york um and where she was buried with a, the thing she was buried with she was buried with possessions proved that she was a very wealthy woman and they've traced the bones and, and, and from the bones you can, you know, assemble the person who looked like. And she was an African woman. Mm. So there was a wealthy African woman living in York. Um, they say that the, the jewels and stuff that she was buried with means that she must have been royalty. She must have been a high status um, woman. So imagine, what's her story? Mm. I mean, that's a great history project right, right there. Definitely. And you're still dealing with Roman times because she lived, she lived in, in, Roman, in Roman times. What about um sorry it just Different. springs to my mind um what about queen charlotte Queen Charlotte, there's a lot of um um there are m different opinions on on Queen Charlotte um uh I can't remember her dates but I know that she she married the king George the third or something? Yeah. Yeah, I think she married King George, George the third or something. Now, some people say she was of mixed race or origin, um part German, part African. Um so uh, there have been references to her as mulatto, which has been the mm -hmm. term for, 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 for mixed race. Um, and that's, to be honest, that's about all I know of I of, know that the portraits of her have often been painted in a way that she resembles more white yeah. than a, yeah. a, a black queen. Yeah. And, and she's not spoken of as, as, as um, in the books as such because of the reference to having mm -hmm. a, an actual mm -hmm. black queen of mm -hmm. England, you know? There, there is a, a, a letter 
um, I can't remember if it applies to, to her. I'm freestyling now. But you know, uh, the custom at that point for amongst the European royalty was that um, you know people would be promised. It's no different to arranged marriage today. People, um, kings and queens, would be promised to each other from birth. Mm, so mm. you could be born a, a, a prince in this country, and your wife has been prom. Your, you, you know, you're going to marry so and so. This little girl who's been born in France. And yeah. when you two of you come of age, you're going to do. Yeah, and, and that's to the joining of family and exactly, wealth and, exactly. and kingdoms. Consolidating and and what have you. So part of the custom was that you would send portraits of each other. Because remember, we're not having a photograph, you know what I mean? And yeah. You can't just look up the Facebook site to see what <laughs> they look like. But so over years, you would send, they would send portraits of each other. So, you know, you get an idea of, of, of who this was. And there was a, and it's, I know it's either Queen Charlotte or it might even be her, her mother. I can't remember if it's her father was white and her mother was black or, or, or vice versa. But there's a, um, um, letters written from the royal courts in this country that's uh, referring to um, um, this child who was to be married to a, a member of the royalty over here, saying about how she, she, she was born dusky brown, dusky, dusky brown, and to the point where um, the royal family that she was part of kept mm. her hidden for, wow. for the first like five, seven, eight years of her life. Oh, wow. Kept her hidden until they could present her in a lighter manner how how <laughs> I don't what, know. what did they enlighten well you know no, i mean i mean you know um um remember they had the the, the um um the white powder thing the, the powder thing i oh, mean you know th that was no i mean but that was a custom among the elites yeah yeah to pow especially you know the french aristocracy yeah. and stuff the powder yeah. stuff and wear masks yeah. or, or whatever yeah that pale face thing yeah and true true to say some s some um 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 it is possible that you, you can be born very dark and mm. just a shade as you grow, you just lighten up a shade. Yeah. Or the yeah. other way around. Other you way can around, be born yeah. very, you know, yeah, some no, black I, babies I, I do have heard are born of quite babies, and it's like you're, you're willing them to darken. <laughs> <laughs> In that sense, I mean, I know of that. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're willing, willing them, them to darken. You're or willing you, them to darken. You want to chat to whoever run that delivery room, man? We just swap my child with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But yeah, but but you know because we were all up in in royalty at, 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 at that that point. So, um, but if I may step step, step back to um, um, the curriculum, sorry, as as we mentioned earlier, um, key stage two, um, Benin, the uh, Benin is modern day Nigeria. Uh, yeah, the southern southern part of um, Nigeria. Benin is one of our most magnificent magnificent um, kingdoms. Um, in West Africa in the medieval period. That's, 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 that's a gold mine we've got there. Um, yeah, rinse it, rinse it, rinse it. I intend to rinse it. Um, I'm in the process of putting together a um, program, um, uh, lesson plans and what have you, around Benin, and I intend to take it, get it into schools because, you know, they've given us a little grain of something and we can plant that seed and, 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 and make it grow. Last bit in reference to... Um, key stage one and again about hiding us in plain sight um they deal with the neolithic period which is otherwise known as the iron age mm -hmm. and one of the things they deal with is this um great archaeological site called uh scara bray which is off the coast of west west scotland and it's one of the most perfectly preserved um sites um um of the neolithic period it's it's you know i mean you can see it's a village complex the house in the main house in the middle with houses around it it's like a little village that's just been perfect perfectly preserved what's the, what's the time period of the neolithic period um neolithic period um we're talking about five to between five and three thousand bc mm -hmm. um now this scara bray has been dated between three thousand two hundred and two thousand two hundred bc yeah, that's what archaeological, archaeologic, the people who dig, the man there who dig, <laughs> <laughs> that's their calculations. Now, the British, the British are very clever. They've assigned that, that this um, Scara Bray um, was uh, uh, done by the Celts. Yeah, and just to let you know that the Celts, um, in it, the Celts are the people who we now know today as the Scottish, the Welsh, and the Irish. Today, the modern history of, of Britain in terms of the last century, last century, the last thousand years, is of the Celts, 
and the Anglo-Saxons. Mm -hmm. Anglo-Saxons being the Anglos, um, 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 kind of French, and Saxons, uh, German. I mean, they were both kind of German, and then you've got the Normans coming in, they brought in the French thing. But the point is, they ascribe it to the Celts. And yet, if you read history of the Celts, the Celts only arrived on this island between 900 and 800 BC. So that raises the question, well, if, if and the Celts were the first kind of European people on this island. Mm. Um, when the Romans came here, they saw Celts. So if the Celts were the first European people mm -hmm. on this island, mm -hmm. uh, who inhabited the islands before them then? Exactly. And whoever inhabited the islands before then built Skara Bray, built Stonehenge, and lots of other um, um, similar shaped um, archaeological sites around this country. And um, English professors who aren't afraid to speak the truth in an unbiased, factual manner, um, and African um, scholars, it was us. We were the first inhabitants of this island. We went under the name, the, name, the ancient name they gave us was um, the Silures, which was S-I-L-U-R-E-S. -E when the Romans came here, and they wrote down everything they saw, you know, they were good keepers of records, um, as they um, um, marched across the country and understood the geography of the country and r wrote that down and what have you, they also described the people. And they said on the coastal areas, and you know, a bit inland, but mainly on the coastal areas, were the Celtic red-haired people. Inland was dark-skinned, woolly-haired, short people, resembling um, 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 almost identical to what they call the pygmies of the Iberian Peninsula. Mm -hmm. um, Iberian Peninsula is kind of um, um, southern Spain, Portugal, um, North Africa, which all was black at that point. So basically what the Romans said is, well, we come on this island, you know, this Brit 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 Britain island, and why are pure red here people there on the coast? But when you go inside, you'll see Africans, mm. and it's us. But they can't let that out. So it was <laughs> us that built Scar. It was us that built Scar Scar Bray, and even to the point where um, um, I know that in in Cornwall um, there are uh, old copper or copper and tin mines mm. that were mined as far back as um, 1800 BC, and the the, the designs of those um, um, sites, those villages, um, are totally reflective almost identical to um, sites built in West Africa at that right. time. So, um, so, so people I are, went into one. No, no. <laughs> so people, what I'd, um, I'd like to just sort of, I have to admit this because last year I taught Scarra Bray okay. to <laughs> two year three pupils, yeah? And uh -huh. I had no clue mm -hmm. that that was us because that's not what I taught. Uh -huh. And also, you got to bear in mind, I teach lots of different subjects. So when it comes to doing Scarra Bray, I have to refer back to the materials just Absolutely. to get my dates and facts and mm -hmm. everything right mm -hmm. again, you know, because it doesn't store in my brain like a computer. I have to refresh every time I teach mm -hmm. it in certain elements on certain things like that. And I taught that and I had no clue that that was us because trust me that would have been taught completely differently yeah completely different and this is the thing and in that material there's no there is no mention no. that that's us there's nothing like that so unless you take it upon yourselves as parents as aunties and sisters, as adults or even as children to go and find out about mm -hmm. your history to know for yourself you're never going to know these things and that relates to um what was mentioned in the um video you played the the black history studies video you played about the impact of scientific racism mm -hmm. so you understand it's like they need to remove us from the history books particularly from their history books mm. and you know scarra bray uh, um, stonehenge and other things are um, um perfect examples of, of, of that but it's like a it's, it's like a um a, a whitewashing of literally of, do you know what I mean? Literally. And removing us from, from mm -hmm. everything in natural mm -hmm. fact. Not only is it a whitewashing and removing us, but they, they're claiming it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, I was at um, uh, an event yesterday where, where Danny was performing, actually. Um, very good performance, I have to say. Thank you. Um, but in that, he mentioned something about what we would often look at as being a, 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 a brilliant establishment of English white people sitting, yeah, was 
Cambridge University. Oh, Oxford and Cambridge. And Oxford and oh, Cambridge right, University. You, yeah. you know, and it was like, <laughs> really? You know, can, if you could just explain that, okay. you know, because to me that was like, okay, I said I'm gone. Okay, um, put it in context. It's a, a, a Black History presentation I do. I, I did um, with some schools in Ballam last year. Um, our, it's called African Literary Heritage. And it begins with, a, I, I recite a poem, um, which obviously it deals with the subject, and um, the poem runs alongside the video. But the, um, the end of the poem, I can't remember it line for, recited line for line, but it speaks about, uh, I say, big up your chest when, you're, when our children go to get to Oxford and Cambridge. I say, why? I said, right, the story um, behind them. Oxford and Cambridge began as translation houses. That's how they started. Translation houses run by monks. Yeah? Because at that point, education was strictly in the hands of the church and, and the monks. You know, you see them old films that the, the monks huddled over, um, um, huddled over the desk, writing in these massive books and, and, and what have you. And what they did was, what they were doing was that they were translating foreign texts into Latin. Because Latin was the the um, the language of the intellectual across um, um, Europe. If if at that point, I think uh, Oxford was founded about twelve hundred, and Cambridge was founded about eight years later. I, I'm I'm guesstimating, but they're, they're 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 that old. So they both began as small translation houses, translating African um, um, texts brought to Europe by the Moors, the African Moors. Um, they translated scientific texts. They, they tr translated historical texts. They translated um, texts on grammar. They translated, to, I mean, the list is long, but that's how they started. Um, and through that translation into Latin, they were able to share the information among themselves and share the information among Europe because they were translating from Arabic and from other African languages into um, um, Latin, which made that information accessible to the elites in Europe. The same goes for universities. I think the, the, the Sorbonne in Paris, that started as a translation house. Um, there's a university in Spain, it's either Seville or Cordoba, that began life as a translation house. All the oldest universities in Europe all began life as translation houses, which raises the question, what were they translating? Mm. They were translating us, our knowledge. Boom, drop wow. the mic. <laughs> that is amazing, do you know? That's amazing. And you would never have known that. You know, you mm. would never have known so, that. So within the, the, the context of the poem, what I say is, yeah, if our children want to go, go learn, you know, because I hear black, some black parents say, about, no, man, I don't want my, my, my child to go to Oxford and Cambridge and get corrupted and get their mind twist up and then come out like, they're, like they think they're white middle class. No, send them to the, to, you know, if they're good enough, send them there. But make them know, say, listen, your, forefa your forefathers and foremothers taught these professors. Mm. You understand? Just put it in its proper context. So you see how they go on all high and mighty? They go on all high and mighty by virtue of us. Because if we didn't teach them for reading in the first place, they wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to come and step to you like they're something. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, if you're going to go, um, go with that knowledge. And they'll say, listen, I've earned my place here. I'm not here as, I don't have to bow to you in some kind of, oh, the great professor. He's like, you know what? I know the history of this building. And if it wasn't for my forefathers and my foremothers, you wouldn't be here. Mm. So mm. you bow to me. <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> if so. we're going to go like that, then yeah. absolutely. And I mean, that's the thing, you know, we, we have to understand that everything around us, mm -hmm. yeah, everything mm -hmm. yeah, on this island mm -hmm. and around here yeah, wouldn't be as it is today if, if it, it wasn't, wasn't for absolutely. the blood, sweat and tears and mm -hmm. the, 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 that in terms of labour, but also mm -hmm. the mentality, the genius, the genius and so forth yeah. of our forefathers, you mm -hmm. know, which is why and we always say, well, you know, we stand on greatness. We come from greatness, mm -hmm. but because what's being taught in our schools and what's being taught to our children, that, uh, that our history starts from slavery. Mm -hmm. When you say that to, I remember saying that to my child, yeah, that we come from greatness. And she's like, how? Yeah. How? Yeah. You know, because th there's no concept 
of anything of all which the is a great question and, and that's the question that that young people are asking because as i say it's kept out of sight it's kept hidden it's like but where where's the greatness because you know for a young person a young black person today what do you see what do you see on your social media what do you see on the tv you see with their suffer you see, you know what I mean? Or, 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 or all of that, just like you, you mentioned in, in, in the video. But again, it's about perspective. You can teach um, 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 slavery and um, not deal with us as a suffering. Because, for example, um, yes, uh, uh, slavery, when, it, when, it's taught, when it's dealt with in schools, and I know that in Quiche's two, no, is it Quiche's three, I think, is transatlantic slavery. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's a, a, a subject in Quiche's three. Now, what they'll talk about is Oh, um, Africans were caught on, you know, were, were, were um, captured and translate, transported across to America where they were slaves. Done. No. For example, the thing to remember is we were brought there physically, but we took with us our skills. We took with us all the, the, the information that we had while we were chilling in yard. Do you know what I mean? We weren't some, we, we didn't arrive as an illiterate people. Far from it. Do you understand? So, for example, in the... That's like they... But that's what they like to that's portray. The, exactly. You know, they like to portray exactly. as if the Africans were uncivilized. Exactly. And they came and, and, and civilized trans, them and yeah. brought civilization uh -huh. to them uh -huh. under the under the name of Christianity yeah. and the Bible. Yeah. So, so man, man and woman arrive in, 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 in um, America, never seen a knife or a fork before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Never seen spoon before, a, 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 a book or whatever. But, for example, um, uh most, if not all, of the Africans um, taken from West Africa arrived in America already inoculated from smallpox because the smallpox inoculation existed in Africa centuries before, um, 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 centuries before Europeans arrived. And what's interesting is um, it was administered by ironmongers. Because if you were an mm -hmm. ironmonger, you know, you made iron tools, you knew how yeah. to work the ferns, but you also had medical skills. Because the idea was that if you, you had the skill to make the finest tool, mm. surgical tool, then you had the skill, the knowledge to actually to apply, use it. Yeah, to, oh, wow. to know it. So it used That's to be... That's a leap, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know well, I mean? again, but you know, it's, it's again, it's a different mindset because we live in, a, in an age now where it's specialism. You learn mm, to do one yeah. thing and you and learn thing, that. And, and, only, and, yeah. you know, and even if you look back on the black scientists like Louis Latimer, you, yeah, you mentioned, yeah, the he, man was an expert in enough fields. Enough. He did you know so I mean? many but things. But we're, we're funneled into you're going to do one thing and you're going to stick with that thing for the rest of your life. That's true. That's now, true. Yeah. with the ironmongers, I know it, it was done um, with a, a very fine needle um, heated red hot at the tip and a live virus was placed on it and then burnt into the skin. Because you know, like in the it's, it's, uh, Melanie shaking, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm describing it. But I know that in in the treatment of some of many diseases, which is what they do with when with children um, um, up to recent times, you give them a live dose yeah. of it, and that. Yeah. In, so that was how we administered um, um, smallpox. We so when we brought when we came to America, America was in a state uh, uh, um, a state of of medicine whereby whole towns could get wiped out through through smallpox. Mm. We brought the cure for smallpox, we brought the cure for syphilis, we brought the cure for gonorrhea, and we brought the cure for, there's one other major, um, 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 you know, major disease that, that could wipe out populations that I can't remember it. We brought the cures. Mm. And um, um, so, you know, it's, you could argue um, enslaved Africans helped clean up America. Well, enslaved Africans, yeah, I understand you, you that. Understand? But they, they also help build America. Yeah, I yeah. mean, this is the thing, you <laughs> yeah. know? And, and it's the same here. Enslaved mm. enslaved Africans cleaned up here yeah, yeah. and helped build, and helped build here, this, 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 you know? this one. So, you know, um, um, again, if I'm going to run a class on, sla on slavery, that's what I'm going to teach. Mm. I'm going to teach, you know, what we, you know, even despite our, our, our conditions of enslavement, what we were able to bring to this, to that country, what we we're able to, 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 to bring, to bring to this country. We helped clean up America. That, and, and there's a, a story, I'm sure, um, I can't remember where I read it. It might be in one of the Blacks in Science that you referred to, which is a mm. brilliant series of, of books. Uh, Michael McMillan runs the company. Um, props to that, brother, because they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Is that the Black Scientists and Inventors books? Yeah, but the, yeah. the, the company is, is Blacks in Science, though. Yeah, yeah so yeah. If, if you Google Blacks in Science, then, then, then you'll see the, um, um, the books that you, you referred to. And there's a story of um, um, a guy who, I can't remember what his invention was, 
but um, he invented it as a, as a whilst um, um, being a, an enslaved um, African on a plantation, and his owner, who you know was a fair man as fair as owners could be, um, wanted him to get the patent. Mm. You know what I mean? You've invented this. You deserve the patent. But the patent office said, no, it's illegal for an, for, African, for an man African man to, to, to um, um, have um, his patent registered. Because, remember, he was three-fifths of a human being or something like yeah. that. You don't yeah. exist legally as a human being. So mm. we cannot assign any kind of legal ownership of anything to him. So what you have in, in, in America is many um, 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 inventions... Uh, particularly like the 17th, 18th and, and early 19th century, which were ascribed to um, Europeans, yeah. were actually created and invented by um, Africans on the plantation. Yeah. But they couldn't, they were I mean, denied. They were denied their, yeah. their, 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 their yeah. intellectual property. Of Absolutely, that. they yeah. were denied and that. So there because goes another way of, of whitewashing, of whitewashing us. The, the, the history. You so know? I think the earliest, some of the earliest patents of um, African Americans is like um, 1811, 1810. You mm -hmm. might get some at the end of 1780, so, so and so. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that was like in particular states, because like in the northern states, um, there were places where, where, where a black man might get. Uh, so was it, that around after the abolition of slavery? Well, no, was the, uh, that when so it started the, picking up that you might. It started picking up um, um, beginning of the nineteenth century, which would be the early eighteen hundreds. But in Britain, um, eighteen thirty eight. Mm. Um, in USA, eighteen sixty eight. But they abolished the trade, eighteen oh seven. So okay. they abolished the trade. So the slave trade itself, the the, the exporting, the transportation in the ships mm. was abolished in 1807. Mm -hmm. But the actual abolishment of the institution... Yeah, that was it, a um, um, couple it, decades later, wasn't it? Yeah, um, the British did it in 1838. Um, each country did it different time. Mm. The British did it in 1838. I know the Americans did it in 1868. I think the French did it... 18, the French held out, man, 18, 1870 and, mm. and, and so forth. And interesting, with, the, with the, um, um, the abolition of the Trade Act, what it meant was that um, um, the only thing of benefit for us was that it prevented the um, new slaves arriving. Yeah. Yeah. But if you were already an enslaved African, yeah. life didn't change for Nothing you. Nothing changed for you. Nothing. You had to wait yeah. another 20 odd, 30 yeah, odd yeah, years yes. for that. Yeah. And yeah. bomb down that's enough plantation to get it. Uh, so. Yeah. And then that's that's the part of our of our history, isn't it? The rebellions, the mm -hmm. re, you know, the fight against. Because mm -hmm. we have to recognise that you know we're still here as a people. Because and yes, we have. <laughs> post-traumatic stress, stress disorder related oh, yes. from that and we're still living the the the, the, the consequences of mm -hmm. those actions mm -hmm. but we're still living and we're still strong and we're still mighty Absolutely. and we're still you know if Absolutely. we are able to reach you know, back and really understand our history and go back to the beginning there's nothing the lessons are there the that, lessons the tools the guidance is all it there. is all there it's all you there. know and it's just you need to need to know yourself know exactly who you are and you see like i said earlier on in the show about the incredible human journey mm. you know they themselves are going to have to recognize that they come from us. us. Mm. Yeah. And as much as they are a mutated form mm -hmm. um, or is mutated. Yes. Mutated is, is correct. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit harsh. Like I'm calling well, it a it's, mutant. It's, it's, you know, but what I actually mean is. Not quite X-Men. But we're walking, walking that way. You know, you know I mean? all, You um, might see said, the odd six-toed web foot. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. You might see. You know. But. And so, but yeah, they, they have to recognize and that, that, you know, that strand mm. is there. Mm. It is there. And that's how they come. Isn't it? So, so yeah, cause we could chat the next half hour about, about them and thing and thing, but let's, let's bring it back to us. Um, well, so we didn't leave us, but we didn't know um, we didn't, you know, but this is all somewhere. the importance. So this is it. This yeah. is what we're stressing. The importance that you teach yourself, uh -huh. your family, uh -huh. your children uh -huh. and thingy, and you spread and you make sure that you continue that process of understanding who we are. And so that then they then will pass it on so that they don't. Um, grow up and have their own children and know not what to impart mm -hmm, to their children because mm -hmm. that's how these things die and out and it reminds me of again a, a speaker at the event that we was at yesterday about 60 untold stories right. you know and oh, yeah. and the, the the tradition of vocal vo um oratory oh, right. mm -hmm. um 
kind of oral history oral history you know and and so much of that can be can be lost when a person goes and leaves us mm -hmm. for this and goes and joins that our ancestors and so forth so it's important that we speak to our elders that we mm. speak to our um our parents and that we also in turn tell our children our stories about us and our people where we come from and how how we've always been as in terms of a community in terms of a, mm. uh, the, the extended family in terms of how we live and and so on and so on i mean it's very uh, um interesting um um project that that you mentioned it's called 60 untold and um it's run by a, a, an organization called the Tutin youth project which actually isn't in existence anymore but um <coughs> again i'm being distracted listen <laughs> i'm a single focus man okay single task and i'm talking now okay all right let me focus now so 60 untold stories google that 60 untold stories there's a website and there's a documentary and it's a very fascinating documentary because what it what um it's done is uh the first wave of uk black caribbean born in this country going to school who attended school the first wave of um children of caribbean parents in this school and it, it, it who are now in their 60s and 70s uh, and it's uh, a series of interviews um with um these people and it's based in south london so it's uh, what used to be tulse hill boys school i think um, and a couple of other schools in the area which were uh, the first schools in South London to have a, 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 a black black students and they interview these these stories there's a long there's a documentary I think it's about an hour um, long documentary it is fascinating absolutely fascinating I've watched half of it um, and it's just the, it, the our elders telling their stories and um, one bit I saw was these two um, um, sisters I think they might be twins and they're in their mid-60s now and they're reminiscing on their early school days and how um, they both ended up as teachers. Um, although they took slightly different paths to it, one went straight from school to university, etc., uh, etc. Et one left school, worked for a while, then um, 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 decided to take her teaching studies and, and what have you. And they said about how in school, and not just as, as black girls, but as girls in particular, because this would have been like uh, late 60s, early 70s. They would have been uh, the, their school period. And they were talking about how as girls, not just black girls, but um, girls in particular, were being shoved into secretarial roles and um, nursing roles and stuff. And they didn't want that. And for them, uh, the desire to be a teacher was almost an act of rebellion you know what i'm saying it was almost an act of rebellion and, and to do with class as well because these were working class um, um girls and teaching was still seen as a middle class profession um and of stuff so you know it, it, it's it's how how quickly things have flipped to a certain degree because you know they were desperate to get into teaching um as a way of in, um, bettering themselves and as a profession where they felt they could better express themselves and, 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 and what have you, um, then, as opposed to now? I mean, no, I, I'm, no I, I'm drawing a false um, uh, um, dichotomy. There's not a, there's not a, it's not an opposition. It's not like one things have flipped 180 degrees. But also what, what um, um, stood out for me is because uh, there was an exhibition based on this um, 60 untold um, in Goldsmiths and it was partly photographic exhibition and what have you and when you see remember these are the children of the Windrush generation first Windrush generation who came to this country gave birth to the youth on this island and the youth go to school and they're all doctors professors lawyers solicitors i mean it's just you know it was the birth of the black middle class in this country and they were motivated to do that because that windrush generation that came here were motivated that their kids were going to get the best education they could and that their children were going to um um excel as simple as that excel so you know again it defies this windrush 
um, mythology, which again is being taught in the schools and probably will be touched on in Black History Month. The way they portray us in Windrush is that we came here with begging bowls, grateful for the great uncle Union Jack to, um, 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 to have us here and stuff. No, we came here highly motivated with dreams and aspirations. And from that, as I say, that first gener generation, from say that first generation, which is featured in this um, documentary series, um, 60 Untold, it's no coincidence that I say they're all uh, um, um, professionals, professors this and that and that, doctor this and this and this, degrees, PhDs, D-Lit, all of them thing, um, because their parents motivated them, their parents understood the importance of education and weren't ramping. Mm, mm. And and what's interesting is that they they take great pleasure in yeah. the, when their offspring, their children, yes. have also gone into teaching. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I had a, a conversation with uh, um, um, Lucretia was uh, her name, and she was just you know I could feel her pride in in she was telling me about how uh, one of her sons is is a teacher. Um, she's got two grandkids now, and one of he's a teacher. And the other one is a, a photographer, is some ph photographic expert or what have you. And she was thinking, and I just thought, oh, oh yeah, my son's a teacher. Big it up, Brentry. <laughs> Big it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So where are we at now? Um, um, oh, you know what? I think it's time for uh, the Primary Learning Center. What next? What's that? The Primary Learning Center. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's right. We're in a primary at TPLC Educational Talk Show, bringing <coughs> to you all the information that can help you with your children to empower mm -hmm. their mindset, to move them forward, to actually just supplement their education so they become that whole, all rounded pupil, student, child that you could desire, you know, that has that, that ambitions to go forward and create whatever it is that they want to create. And speaking of which, you know, so we showed to you, um, played to you uh, the Black History Studies Children's Edition um, a little sample of the introduction to that. And that's actually a course that's going to be running on the TPLC Academy. Now, this is being created by myself and, and Danny and another colleague of mine, uh, where we are putting together um, an online curriculum that teaches both maths and English as and a black history unit and mindfulness, empowerment, um, all of these things that will help to bring our children um, to another level and understanding of their learning. So this is at TPLC Academy um, it will be we're launching real soon we'll let you know exactly the dates of that we're just putting the content together to make sure that everything is complete mm -hmm. and that will be going live and this is a, a resource for everybody parents teachers schools to be able mm -hmm. to use um, if you are homeschooling your child then Absolutely. again that's another resource Absolutely. now as much as I've said it is that it just in that simple way um, TPLC Academy is actually going to be an online learning hub so that it's not just about your maths and English and, and those type of courses but there'll be lots of other materials available mm -hmm. lots of other resources that involve other people outside of us because you know there's so many of us doing stuff in the community but in such small pockets so the Academy is aiming to bring everybody together like a central place where you can access all of these different resources that you can use at home to empower your children that schools could access if they want to bring programs into the school again that would allow them to to uh, widen the curriculum and broaden the horizons of the children that they teach um so on there will be uh, webinars and um uh, newsletters uh, poetry corners virtual classrooms virtual though. classrooms there'll be live classes going on as well you'll be able to be in constant touch with us and and, and have uh, the constant feedback and updates and and that kind of things you'll also um Oh, yes, I will be marking homework. <laughs> we'll be, yeah. And the lash will be applied <laughs> if needed be. No, okay. that's not it's true. We're, we're going old school here. We're not going that old We're going old school here. <laughs> no, we're not going that. It's all about encouragement and promotion of ourselves, you know. Um, so it's a, it's going to be an amazing interactive hub for both, for all, both parents and children, to access a world of resources, you know, that can help to 
get our children to have a better understanding of who they are and what their abilities are so you know look out for the launch of TPLC Academy it's going to be an Mm -hmm. awesome thing you know that allows you to access it so it's essentially an online supplementary school you know Um, and it's just going to be brilliant Mm. And you know, as as like, Melanie says, like we're in the process of, of creating it. We're putting the resources together. Um, um, yeah, so we're gonna uh, bus it to the our The launch is imminent, and um, it's a very empowering thing to do. You know, just for yourself, um, it's a very very empowering thing f- thing to do. So I just want to give thanks and praise to the um, to the guiding spirit and the ancestors for putting me in this place where that's what I'm doing. I give thanks, I give thanks, I give thanks. Um, I, well, you know what? I'm gonna give you like a 30 second taste of something, yeah? Just have a listen to, to, to this. In the 15th century, there rose in West Africa one of the biggest and most powerful empires of the medieval world. Covering two thirds of West Africa, an area larger than modern day Europe, This empire excelled in wealth creation, technology, education, and architecture, and was considered the most advanced empire in the known world. It set standards that Europe would adopt in later years. Its name, the Songhai Empire. That's just, and that's all you're going to get. That's just a little taster, you understand? Because, like I said, we're bringing lessons. We're bringing proper, real lessons. With some brilliant activities to, to you know, um, compound the, the learning that you have, to consolidate the learning that you're having um, through these, these cl- classes. It's just going to be awesome. The Primary Learning Centre. The Primary Learning Centre. Okay, folks, and that's it. That would say, I'd say we'd like to say thank you very much. Do you know what I realised that we didn't do? We didn't give out contact numbers for you to get in touch with us, but we will be doing that. Like I said, this is our first show of the primary, uh, can't even talk now, of the TPLC (laughs) Education Talk Show. (laughs) And I think it's time for a long lie down once this thing is over. Okay. (laughs) The first edition of the talk show, you know, and we aim to be bringing to you lots of information and it won't just be us talking, you know, we'll have some brilliant inter- people coming, live interviews and some pre-recorded inf- interviews of people that will have excellent information to share with you, resources that you can access for you to be able to try things at home. Um, and also we'll just have an open open corner where you can just call in, uh, put, put your questions to us, any advice and things that we, are, we can give you, ways to go, move forward. So to finish off this Black History Month one, we just want to let you know of um, some last minute events that you might be able to take your children to, to um, for them to get some, uh, some extra additional knowledge um, about what is going on um, in our history. So for example, um, this Saturday at CSCP, which is that Croydon Croy- Supplementary Education Project. Um, there is the amazing uh, Andrew Muhammad, aka the investigator, who is doing one of his breakdowns on none other than Marcus, Marcus Garvey. Garvey. <laughs> 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 now, let me tell you, that is going to be a roadblock. Mm-hmm. And you see... Get there early. Early, early, early. They start at six o'clock. You best now, get there at lunchtime. Now, <laughs> Andrew Muhammad's um, breakdowns are always jam-packed. And you know what? You are in the midst. I can't even describe what one of his things are like, but you, you, you're you getting so much information and entertainment at the same time. You know, the way that he delivers the, what he is that you are learning, you, you'd you be amazed Um but how it's done, it's, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. So I can guarantee you that that's going to be a roadblock. But if you can get there and bring your children with you, mm-hmm. that is an important one for you to go and have a go and check out and see what is happening there. Absolutely. And a um, few other things, because um, I'm, I'm a, associated with uh, Croydon Supplementary Croydon Supplementary Education Project. Um, I do some workshops with them and for them. Um, this Thursday, half term um, at CSCP, there's a presentation on general wealth, legacy planning, financial awareness, and wealth preservation. And it's presented by a brother, Sean Freckleton of Affinity. I'm not, I don't know what the organization Affinity is, but you know, it's about raising awareness within our community about wealth creation and financial um, awareness. 
Saturday, we've got the Marcus Garvey event. And on the last day of the month, Monday, 31st of October, um, a sister I know well and who I, I just big up to the heavens, Kandasi Can Chimberry, will be doing a presentation on Nefertiti, a, the, a black icon. Um, Nefertiti, uh, ancient um, Kemetic queen, and part of the discussion is going to be about her and uh, black female beauty standards, etc., etc., etc. So, sisters, come on down and bring your bring your your your, your brothers with you. Um, and that being Monday, the thirty first of October. That's the end of the month. That's black the history month. stops. Well, that's the, oh, that's it. My please. history. No, but they please. said my history stops midnight. 31st of October, I cease to exist. Listen, black history is our everyday history, every single day of the year history. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to also give a shout out to Donna, who is locked in, tuned into what's going to happen here right now. So thank you very much for tuning in to us. That is brilliant. Donna, on, welcome, Donna. welcome. Um, and okay, um, and the other thing, there's a movie out that's out at the moment, um, Queen of Katwe. Yes. Okay, now, I know that's on for, for much longer so I do think that's a good movie to mm -hmm. go and take it mm -hmm. I haven't seen it but starring you know, um, Lupita um, can't remember her last Lupita name but she Lug won Lug I can't say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> starring Lupita who many of you know won the Oscar um, 12 Years a Slave and it's a story of surrounding a chess prodigy that's right in Uganda yeah something like yeah, that yeah 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 we're going to plan to see it so um, um, after we if you don't see it we'll probably drop you a little review yeah there's also a, a musical play from south africa which yes, is in the, the, town the, the, which um, is well the man seeing. of good hope the man of good hope and that's at the young vic theater uh -huh. um and that again looks like an amazing production and mm -hmm. again once showing the skills of our um of our people mm -hmm. in terms of their percussion their ear their music their movement the whole shebang the skill the talent is just amazing so again if you can get to go and see that then that would, be, that would be worth in going to have a look at. So there's enough out there, enough to keep you busy. And also check out Robin Walker um, and the events that he is doing. So look him up and see what's going on with him, as well as Tony Walker, yeah. who, who does the... Um, Black uh, History Walk. Black History Walk. And, history walks. Many and again, presentations. making reference to um, what we were saying in terms of uh, London and England. And the hidden history the of hidden us history of in us London. In, you know, as you walk past, you wouldn't know mm -hmm. that this, uh, you know, certain things. So it's worth going on that walk to see where we are in this, in this city. city. I know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, this has been Danny T of Evolving Creatives. And, and, and Melanie Hibbert from the Primary Learning Centre. Um, we're under this is the TPLC educational talk show and we will be coming to you on a regular basis um, but not too regular <laughs> <laughs> on a regular basis um, and to bring to you all the, all that is about all education the goodness that's all out the there goodness for us that we can do to help support our children our families and our community to raise our level of achievement and mindset and what it is that we can go forward and create for ourselves yeah it starts with the children you know they have to know where they come from they have to know that they are great they have to know that they have the ability within them to go forth and build and create whatever it is that they desire to do and we have to ensure that that mindset is open for them to do that so none of that oh, um, you can't do that it's not possible for you that's not you know to keep in your place none of that, that we don't accept that we don't accept that so we have to ensure that we do that www.theprimarylearningcenter.org